Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and in the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, to God. be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we give you thanks for the power of your word and for the power of your spirit drawing us here tonight. So we pray now that as we reflect on that word, you might give us the insights we are longing to hear. And then by the power of your Holy Spirit, as we leave here tonight, give us strength to live it and do it in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So I want to start by sharing a uh, story with you, perhaps a bit of a testimony, if you will, as a pathway to our reflection tonight. And I share this story with you as somebody who is already on the other side of this, someone looking back at this experience. So it was somewhere around my sophomore year of high school, and I was in this ecumenical youth singing group called Real Life Singers. And we traveled around southern Wisconsin doing these kind of mini cantatas, if you will. And as part of our presentation, teenagers, yes, teenagers, would give testimonies. And yes, even Lutheran teenagers would do that. I can't specifically say how I stumbled upon this, but somewhere in the midst of my involvement with this group, I came across the scripture, Proverbs 8.35. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. Proverbs 8.35 says this, He who finds me finds life. Now, I wanted me some of that life, whatever that meant, but the question was, where do I go to find it? When do I have enough of it, and uh, how do I know I have it once I got it? Oh, the joys of a teenage brain, right? Slowly but surely, I came to learn some important lessons and what this finding life thing was about. I realized it was never God who was absent or lost. It was I. And that is not to say that I was lost to him. He always knew where I was, and he most certainly always knew where he was. But I was kind of lost in myself and in the world, in my understanding of who I was and, of course, who I wasn't, what purpose I had, who designed that purpose, and for what purpose was that even designed? Finding him and the life he spoke about took a whole lot of Holy Spirit work along with a lot of abundant grace and mercy on his part. And thanks be to God, he's always faithful. So fast forward 18 months from then, and I had learned a lot. My brain had aged a little, and, and my faith grew a little. And it's amazing how being in the Word and in worship can do that for you, even when you don't always understand everything that's going on in your life or that's being preached about or talked about. But during that time, I learned that God is always in the midst of his creation, always in the midst of our lives, always more ready to give than we are to receive, always more willing to pour himself out for us, even when we don't deserve it. To know even glimpses of God sparks in us a desire, a hunger and thirst to seek him even more. So there we were, the real life singers. I mean, is that not ironic, you know, trying to figure out what this life thing is and that's the name of the group. And we're in uh, Madison doing one of our presentations. And it was as though 
I was getting pushed from my, from my back. Like somebody was taking their hands under my armpits and lifting me up off the risers I was sitting on and God was wanting to use my voice to give a testimony. Tell them about Proverbs 8.35. Tell them that I am the source of life, the only source of life, in life, to life, for the life to come. He who finds me finds life. Now, I certainly hadn't planned on giving any type of a testimony that night, but God had other plans, and it wasn't the most perfectly articulated testimony. It was just a teenager standing in front of God's people, sharing a message about seeking God, putting aside our will and way for his, and in doing so, how you will find life. Kind of like I'm doing here tonight. All right, so fast forward to tonight. Just a few moments ago, we got to hear part of that creation story. God bringing about something from nothing. Now, as well as the choir read that uh, Old Testament lesson, thank you choir, I appreciate that, I have to say it's really hard to hear that story without hearing Pastor Johnson saying, and it was good, right? Every time God created something, it was good. There really is something <clears throat> about the creation story that is uplifting. Sin isn't even a part of the world yet. Life is being unleashed in the world. There was no other agenda other than God sitting back, creating, and totally loving all that he was creating. Yeah, that there over there, that's good. Then, the next day, he does it all over again. Oh, what fun that must have been for him. And then we get the John text. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He speaks. It becomes. It is. Nothing is made without him. And in him was life. There's that life thing again. What other God can create? like the one who drew each of us here tonight? What other God can create heaven and earth and sea and land, living creatures, light out of darkness, life out of dust? We are not our creator. We cannot create our life, nor can we preserve it or save it, not in the way God intended anyway, but thanks be to God, he can, and he does, and he is. He created us to be in a relationship with him, to fellowship with him, loving him, serving him, worshiping him. He gave us today this very moment, even as he prepares for us in eternity. I mean, imagine someone purposefully wanting to spend not just the rest of their earthly life with us, but eternal life with us. I mean, we haven't even finished doing all the sinning we're going to do in this lifetime, and there he is preparing for us already. You want to talk about love. You want to talk about grace. You want to talk about being invested in a relationship. To know God is to know life. Over the next three months, we are going to be reflecting on what we believe. Where and in whom do we find life? And we're going to be using the Apostles' Creed as the foundation of our teaching in the midst of the preaching. And this past Sunday was a good kickoff to it. We, we got to hear a little bit. It was Trinity Sunday. And we got to hear a little bit about the creeds of the church from Pastor Johnson. This Apostles' Creed has been part of the church since the second century. It is our confession of faith. And it is spoken throughout the entire world <clears throat> in this creed the gospel message itself is summarized creation redemption promise okay so let me ask you a question you can really raise your hand if you want to um, no points you just raise your hand sorry 
anybody ever directly ask you, what do you believe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody ever directly ask you, what do Lutherans believe? Okay, how about this one? Are Lutherans Christian? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and the question is, sometimes we struggle to find words to articulate what it is we believe. We have knowledge of God through the word. We have experiences of him being at work in our lives. And there is no doubt that these experiences shape our stories and testimonies that we share with others, like that Proverbs 835 did for me. Our temptation is that we're prone to assuming there are no other experiences or knowledge beyond our own experience and knowledge. The word itself tells us there are many other signs and wonders Jesus did, but these were recorded so that you might believe. The creator has no limitations, and he will not spare anything in caring for his creation or caring for us. Faith is believing in that which we cannot see or understand or even know. God isn't simply who we think he is. He is who he says he is. So in addition to scripture itself, the creed is a great place, a great beginning to understanding who and what we believe. Now I provided for you all, hopefully you got it, a green insert. I'd invite you just to go ahead and pull it out. If you would. Kind of our theme again for this summer. And it contains the, three, the creed, and it's divided up into three articles with an explanation. So tonight I am looking at, can you guess, creation, the first creed, right? The first article and the explanation. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. As I would say to my confirmation kids, little Luther says, What does this mean? Thank you. What does this mean? All right, so I'm going to invite you to read this part with me. Ready? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. That there is some good stuff. That is the God we are worshiping. That is the God who created each of us and said, it was good. <clears throat> he knew us before he formed us. And he gave us life. He gave us this life. Every day he is engaged in his creation, creating new life, sustaining new life, receiving life, pouring out his life so that we might have life. He did not create us to leave us. He finds great joy in what he created, including us and all of our challenges and sin that goes along with it. He is engaged and involved in what he has created. He walks with us through the valley of death. He rejoices with us on the mountaintops. He carries us when we are weary. He encourages us when we're uncertain. He provides for us when things are feeling scarce. He draws us to himself when we are lost. And he saves us in our time of need. To know him is indeed to know life. To know him gives our life purpose and hope, not just for this life, but the one yet to come. 
And I don't know where you are in your faith walk. I don't know where you're struggling or if you're struggling or where the, the so pockets of the wellspring of life is a little bit dried up for you. But for tonight, you are where you need to be among that walk, among his word, around his table, in the midst of his people. Because even if you don't see it or feel it, <coughs> he loves you, he's with you, and he will never leave you. The scriptures proclaim it, the creed teaches it, and by his power, we get to proclaim it and confess it. So I pray God's abundant blessings upon you as he continues to reveal himself in your life that we might leave here tonight ready to maybe share and give a little testimony. You never know. Because his grace is amazing. His creation is life-giving and sustaining. And we can go tonight leaving, trusting in his word, listening for his spirit, and ready to let our lights shine to reveal his glory through all we say and do. I pray that for you and for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a few moments to meditate on the word and the will of God. <clears throat> 